Jane Alexander, and I'm the Chief Information and Digital Officer at the Cleveland Museum of Art. The Cleveland Museum of Art is a free museum with a world-class collection, and my job is to create innovative, fun, engaging, and hopefully never ever frustrating experiences that give people the tool sets, no matter their age or background, to connect and look closer at our collection. I joined the Cleveland Museum of Art in March 2010 in the midst of a $330 million building project. We launched what had been previously known as the Lifelong Learning Center in January 2011. We did this because the original project had not taken into account sustainability, scalability, or to really take advantage of our newly digitized collection. The project that opened in December 12, 2012 became known as Gallery One. Gallery One is an interactive space, or spaces actually, that blend art and technology to bring people of all backgrounds, ages, and levels of art history into our museum. During the closure of the museum, we did a lot of studies, and we found that people are intimidated by art museums, or they found them boring or dusty, not a place for families. You could have a PhD in physics and you still would come to a museum and not know what to do except to read the um, tombstone information. So we created a space that would attract, entertain, engage, and mostly connect you with our collections and really give you the tool sets that would help you look closer. Gallery One is a 14,000 square foot space located at the entrance of the museum and includes Studio Play, Gallery One proper, and our iconic collection wall. And of course, Artlens app, which also works throughout the entire museum. The first iteration of Studio Play was a family-friendly space with almost completely high-touch activities and only two interactives. After going to Studio Play, Gallery One proper is the central space in the Gallery One where masterworks are on display with touchscreen and touch-free interactives like the one shown in this one, Make a Pose. Um, I really love this photo because uh, I was on a tour one day and it brings up an object in our collection, like our statue, and you have to match its gesture. And the interactive scores all your accuracy. So I saw these kids playing and making the pose and I was just laughing because you can really see how closely they are observing the statue. The collection wall is an iconic centerpiece of the Gallery One experience. The collection wall is live and operates in real time to display all the works of art on display from the permanent collection. It can be anywhere from 4,000 to 4,500 objects at a time. Anytime an artwork is moved or accessioned or deaccessioned or gone on loan or taken to conservation, you can see it on the wall. Also, the display transitions every 40 seconds from displaying the whole collection on view to showing curated groupings of artworks by themes or different types. The Artlands app also contains all the artworks on view, and it initially connected to our collection wall using RFID. It now connects using Bluetooth. Artlens app allows you to favorite artworks, create tours. It can also be used as a GPS mapping system using, um, we have about 240 eye beacons throughout the museum. Artlens uses augmented reality that allows you to scan artworks for more information as well as hotspots pop up that provide details about the artwork. This encourages visitors to look closer at the artwork after they use the app, rather than reading this tombstone and then sort of walking past the artwork. I love showing this slide to illustrate how people have always been hesitant about incorporating technology into museum. This image is from the records of a curator's meeting at the Met Museum in April of 1967. The text circle says, Ms. Irma Wilkins' son has questioned the effectiveness of a computer in the catalog department. Obviously, we, that computer was probably pretty essential. Still, when I started Gallery One Project, there were many people worried that using technology would take away the credibility of our world-class museum. Even in 2010, when I arrived at the museum and asked to see where our high-res, newly digitized collection was stored, I was brought down to this room, which had all of the high-res images on about 12,000 gold DVD discs. The project of getting all that information 
into a way that could be easily accessible was part of the back end that became what powered Gallery One. Gallery One became the test bed for the museum's digital strategy. Having a good back end is vital to having a dynamic, constantly up to date and evergreen project like Gallery One. The back end for the Gallery One interactives is highly integrated and the IMTS team maintains more than 30 application systems to meet the museum's information storage needs. Each of these unique databases has one or more user interfaces so the information can be accessed appropriately by on-site and online visitors, museum staff, and of course leadership. As you can see here, blue is the collection side, all, anything that has to do with our collection. Green are all the applications from parking, all business applications, which also includes membership, donor, and ticketing, um, which actually is newly supported by Tessa Tura. Thank you, Tessa Tura. The space I will be focused on today is Studio Play, which is the first experience visitors engage with when they enter Gallery One. The first iteration of Studio Play opened on December 12, 2012, and was almost completely made of high-touch activities with limited digital interactives. The biggest goal of Studio Play was to have a space for families and kids with no metadata, no artists, no names or dates that allowed families to learn and create art and get familiar with our collection. What worked is that families with young kids felt welcome and comfortable and became a place for parents to, to decompress and relax while kids played in a fun and safer environment. Though many of the activities did not directly relate with the collection. What didn't work is that this space was not fully intergenerational and not engaging for older kids. And by older kids, I mean primary school kids, middle school kids. They were not fulfilling the mission of Gallery One. It also had a playroom feel, as you can see here, that deterred visitors and families with, with middle school and primary school children from wanting to even come into Gallery One because it's right at the entrance of the whole space. Studio Play also didn't connect visitors with the permanent collection and encourage them to explore and dig deeper into the museum, which is, was the ultimate goal of Gallery One from the beginning. After conducting evaluations on Gallery One, we found that visitors have high expectations what they can find at the museum, and they didn't want experiences that were not unique and could be replicated at sort of either a bookstore or library. As a result, we decided to renovate Studio Play with our new goals in mind. One of the things people really wanted to do in Studio Play was to create art, but obviously we can't have visitors painting or using clay so close to the artwork. So we decided to create touch screens and touch screen free technology that would allow visitors to create their own unique pieces of art that really reflect the museum collection. So we go to the green light to renovate Studio Play and we were super excited about the cross collaborative team at the museum and the innovative design firm we hired what could possibly go wrong? Well, people don't like change. Despite a Facebook post explaining that Studio Play would only be shut down for two months and then reopened, many parents thought this meant that Studio Play would not be family friendly anymore. The Facebook page went crazy with parent backlash to the point that people who had never even been to the museum were commenting that CMA hated families and kids. Fortunately, not all the parents freaked out. One person left a comment saying that CMA has always provided amazing experience and that everyone should just wait to see the space before they judge it. After closing Studio Play for two months, Studio Play was reopened in June 2016 during our centennial celebration. The new Studio Play is designed with technology that is exquisitely responsive to our user movement, making the transition between observation and interaction seamless, effortless, and accessible to all. The touchscreen interface that might have limited access for non-readers or frustrated non-tech savvy visitors are now gone. Studio Play has become a case study for using human-centered design and kinesthetic and action-based experiences to develop visually focused engagement and to further creativity and curiosity in a museum. The best way to show the new Studio Play and all it's interactive is with our video.
We expanded our line and shape activity from being in a small corner in Studio Play to being a focal point of the space and spreading across a whole wall. And why we did this is because this activity had been successful from the beginning. We created this based on this study that had people go into a museum and pick five objects they liked. And then they were questioned about those objects. They then had a second group that went in and were told to take photos of five objects they liked. When those people were questioned, they remembered the least about the objects because their brain told them, I took a photo, I can refer to that later. The third group of people were told, take a photo of a detail of five objects you like. These people not only were able to recall and talk the most about the painting, but they had the most emotion about the artworks they had chosen. We did keep a few touchscreen activities, but they still were based on the idea of looking closer and looking at the details. Collage Maker and Portrait Maker are also both touchscreen and their purpose is to really look closely at the details in our collection in unique ways. You can create a collage with artwork and objects from our collection without ever using scissors or glue. And when your masterpiece is finished, you are given the metadata for all the artwork, including the location in the galleries, encouraging you to go into the museum and find the pieces of your masterwork in our galleries. Portrait Maker also allows you to create works of art in relation to our collection. They do this by, it takes a picture of you, and then you select either an oil painting or a watercolor or a charcoal, and depending on the work you choose, it will give you that palette and that brushstroke and that it reveals your portrait as a piece of work of art in our museum. Beginning our transition to becoming touch screen free, Paint Play and Pottery Wheel both use Connect's barrier free technology that allows visitors to create art without ever using any physical tools. Um, I love Paint Play because it, you can paint like Pollock by throwing or splattering paint um, in a space that's right next to artworks. And the same with making pottery. I mean, you are you're given a lump of clay and then the detailing is detailing that you can find in our own ceramic collection. Reveal is a game that is responsive to the visitor's movement. And visitors work together to reveal new masterworks in the collection by using their body and gestures, which encourages visitors to consider the composition and colors of artworks before all the details come into focus. What this also encourages is socialization in the museum. Just last week, uh, there was a woman of about 80 and a seven-year-old. Um, the space was filled with people and they were playing this game and they were laughing and talking and I said, oh, is this your grandmother? And um, she said, oh, no, we've never met. And then they introduced each other. And that, to me, is also success because really to have socialization while looking at art with all different age groups is total success for our museum. Reveal alternates with Zoom, which turns the user's body into a giant pinch and zoom magnifying glass. This allows you to look at details in a painting, seeing things you may have not noticed in the gallery. When you work on Zoom with someone else, you can combine into one giant pinch and zoom, thus exploring details together and when you're in the museum together, finding them and having discussions. So, where do we go from here? After reopening Studio Play, the research evaluation team conducted a small scale survey of the new space. We found that the responses were overwhelmingly positive and that many parents loved the new digital interactives and found the experiences to be more educational and they still so saw it welcoming to families. And now when they saw it welcoming, they could bring their 18-year-old, their 6-year-old, their 10-year-old, grandma, the neighbor, and there was something for everyone. Along with Studio Play, another aspect of upgrading the Gallery One experience was upgrading ArtLens. ArtLens was already a pioneer of museum apps, but because of its massive amount of content, it could take over 10 minutes to download, and that's if you were lucky enough to be on CMA's fast Wi-Fi. It also took a huge chunk of memory, and when your own tech team can't keep ArtLens on your phone, you know you're in trouble. 
So we did the impossible. We did not take away any functionality. In fact, we added functionality and we re-engineered the whole app. And so now you can download it in less than a minute and it takes up as much memory as, say, Snapchat. ArtLens um, originally was just on iPads only and it would connect to our, our iconic collection wall with an RFID tag, but now it can be downloaded on Android or iOS devices and um, it will connect using Bluetooth and when you find an object, it will then take you through wayfinding to go and find the exact gallery your object's located in. Now that Studio Play and ArtLens have been upgraded, we are focusing on renovating and relaunching Gallery One proper. Using the experience of Studio Play and building on the success of barrier-free technology, the new Gallery One will have zero touchscreen interactives, and the barrier-free interactive projections will be activated by visitors first engaging with the physical artwork. I like to say that Gallery One is always in perpetual beta because we are always adjusting and upgrading to keep up with the changes and in innovation to improve our visitors' experience. So in this new version, the artwork will actually be in the foreground and the activities will, be, will pull you in in the background where in, initially we called them lenses and the lenses, the kiosks were in the foreground and the artwork was behind them, thus removing the barriers. This is an early prototype of the type of interactives that you might find in the new Gallery One. As you can see, it is touchscreen free and the technology is responsive to your facial expressions in order to create a unique compilation of artworks that might interest you, actually might disgust you, might confuse you. It will then push you to look for them in the permanent galleries so that you can understand a little bit more about the artworks, but also about what attracts you to these artworks. We're excited to be opening the new Gallery One in June 2017 in time for our annual solstice party, and I hope many of you have been inspired to come join us. See you in Cleveland. Thank you.